ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me, Nox Longbows. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to my 99% Zami Guide, Range Edition. In this guide, I'll be going over my personal preset, as well as a more budget-friendly version of the preset that I use, so that way it can be demonstrated that this boss doesn't require the best gear. Uh, there's a lot of hype around the boss, a lot of people are probably, uh, you know, kind of afraid of it, because it is new content, you know, it's new, it's kind of scary, but honestly, at 99%, there's a lot of mistakes you can make, and you'll still get kills just fine. In this guide specifically, I'll be going over the edict order, and kind of roughly what they all do. I'll go over the special attacks that you'll encounter, and I'll also obviously go over the two different presets as well as have a few example kills, and there will be time codes in the description, and as well as on the buffer bar of the video they will appear, so you can go to whatever parts that you need. Anyways though, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this guide. So on screen are the two presets I put together for this video. The one on the left is the budget preset, and I've intentionally left a lot of switches out of this preset, especially some of the more basic ones, like even just a shield, just to prove that for 99% you really don't need a whole lot. However, feel free to add in whatever else you want. Uh, if you have a Pernix Quiver that can hold bolts and you want to bring a crossbow and a shield for some shield abilities, feel free to do so, and you know other things of the sort. But it's really basic. It's food, prayer, a vit pot, and an overload with some Vuln Bombs. There's really not too much to it. The two rune pouches for both presets hold uh, Venge and Disrupt uh, shield runes. And honestly, that's about it. It's standard Serenic with uh, some perks are uh, advanced perks. Like I think it has C4R5 and Impatient 4 Devoted 4. Both of those are relatively easy to get if you look at... Uh, for Impatient 4, Devoted 4, I think I used the Zam, uh, the Zami Mijarners or whatever the hell they are. I forget the name of them, but you can buy a hundred of them every four hours and they give a lot of Zami components, so feel free to use those for a cheap perk. There is a, I'll leave a uh, link in the description below for the kind of uh, basic and advanced perks for each combat style. It's a wiki link. And it's really helpful, and when you click on the individual perks, it'll show you the combination of per the materials you need inside of the perk calculator. Um, as far as that's concerned, though, it does have Biting 3 on it. I do remember that much, and I believe it also has Enhanced Devoted 4. As far as I'm aware, Enhanced Devoted 4 and the regular Devoted 4, there is still a kind of spaghetti code where they can proc independently of each other. So that's something to consider if you want the uh, extra Devotion. Uh, but other than that, it's really simple. Ascension grips, if you have nightmares, feel free to bring those. Uh, the standard fleeting boots are very inexpensive. And then I went ahead and went with a Nox bow as kind of another representation of you don't need a whole lot for this. Because Nox bow is honestly one of those weapons, I think it's one of the most universally hated weapons in RuneScape for just being actual garbage. That's where a lot of people, what a lot of people think about it. And to be fair, a few years ago, those uh, those thoughts had their merits to them. However, with the God Arrows, specifically the full arrows, at Zami, you'll still have 100% accuracy on the Demon, on the Mages, and on Zami himself. I actually tested this preset with a Zarite bow and full arrows, and I was still getting perfect accuracy everywhere. So uh, there's a lot you can do with this boss in regarding to what you bring. But I went ahead and went with the Nox Bow just to take advantage of the full arrows. I believe Nox Bow at the time of recording was around 230 mil. And I believe Ascensions are around 300. So, you know, there is an option there. But if you want, if you already have Ascensions, don't worry about it. No, they will work just fine. And you can bring either Hydrix or Onyx or Ruby Bolt. You know, any of the three are going to work for you. Hydrix honestly might be a bit overkill just because of how much Dren you get during the fight. The Noxbow also has uh, just Precise 6 and Karoming 4 on it. I had uh, some spare shadow components from a. Uh, Brooch of the God procs, and I went ahead and just went for a Chroming attempt. I did use Gricko with this preset, and so I needed a Chroming swap on, or a Chroming perk on the bow, and it's just a bog standard Chroming 4, nothing special there, and then I just went with a Precise 6 as kind of just a uh, filler perk. If you want to, and you have the extra cash, go ahead and upgrade that to a Precise 6 Aftershock 1, and then uh, Chroming 4 equal 2. 
and you can be off to the races with those perks. The blue EOF that doesn't have the ornament kit, that is the Debo EOF. And I put Luck of the Dwarves in there just because, uh, you know, put in whatever ring you want, whether it's the uh, upgraded Archer's Ring uh, or the Reaver's Ring, you know, either one, which, whatever ring you have, I went ahead and just kept it really basic. And honestly, on the other side of the screen, my personal preset, it's just kind of a continuation of that uh, basic preset being that I'm using Hex Hunter Bow instead of an Ox Bow. And I went ahead and brought my Blights because I do have Pernix Quivers, so I just have uh, Hydrix Bolts in there and Full Arrows in there as well. And so I can switch between Crossbows and Regular Bows without, you know, having to worry to any about any ammo switching. And I went ahead and brought Hex Hunter. It does have the enchantment upgrade, so it's technically like a tier 104 and a half or tier 104.8. It's very strong here. You'll see in the example kill, it can uh, Debo spec with this Hex Hunter hits extremely hard on Zamorak. So other than that, um, I'm now just realizing looking at the preset that I have the spiritual renewals for the spiritual prayers and a blessed flask. Um, I forgot to take the blessed flask out of this preset. Although honestly, there isn't really anything that I would put in its place. Uh, maybe I could bring my uh, normal offhand blight. So the ice dyed blight, that's just a standard main hand. That's uh, precise six aftershock one. And the offhand one that isn't dyed is my Karoming swap. So if I, if I wanted to, I could probably bring the uh, uh, take out the Bless Flask and bring the Karoming Swap in the preset, but honestly, I don't find it necessary. I pretty much camp hide or I camp uh, Hex Hunter for the whole fight, and I don't really swap to crossbows. The only reason I have the crossbows in there in the first place is for the demon because Hex Hunter doesn't uh, work on the demon, but it works on all the mages and it works on Zami himself. Um, the cape is just kind of standard. You don't need the hybrid cape, by the way, for the uh, basic or the budget preset. You, the range cape will work just fine. And yeah, that's about it. The yellow EOF is SGB. I, the orange one in the inventory is uh, ECB. And then the blue one is obviously Debo. Uh, the puzzle box in both of them, you can just pick that up at the beginning. And it is so far, all it does is 40% environmental damage reduction when inside the Infernus. So it is nice. It's worthwhile to bring. It's more of a high enraged uh, item, but you know you might as well bring it as inventory space at this boss is not exactly a big concern. Uh, other than that, Vitpot is nice and uh, some basic food, Vone bombs, and that's about it. And again, the rune pouches are just for. Um, disrupt shield and for vengeance, although I don't really venge too much. And honestly, that's about it. I am using the uh, upgraded Archer's Ring. Um, I am forgetting. I think it's Stalker's Ring is the name. And I do have the enchantment for that. And so it gives additional crit chance when using a bow. So it's 4% instead of 3. And it also gives extra crit damage. So uh, you get a, th I think it's a 3% damage increase if you crit. So it is very much worthwhile to use. I would say it's worthwhile to use over Reaver's Ring because you're getting more damage inside of your crits. And range is not a crit reliant combat style. So I would very much recommend using the Stalker's Ring over the Reaver's Ring with range, especially if you're going to employ the uh, tier 95 bow or the Hex Hunter or anything like that. Uh, definitely definitely recommend it as well as i should make a note here i am saving for the tier 95 bow but it is pretty expensive i will be updating my range dps guide when i get it but for this guide and for zamorak in general you do not need it at all uh, hex hunter will do more than enough damage however could even use this preset to then iron man your own bow if you don't want to pay for it and go from there anyways though, let's go ahead and move now into the edict uh, rotation that I do and what the edicts do in general. Alrighty, so for doing the kill itself, this is the edict order I use for a 99%. I just run one through six, so it's, you know, the minimal amount of distance in uh, running in between each one to help save a little bit of time. 
And I start with one rather than six because I'd rather have my food working all the time rather than not, and a couple other things. However, let's go ahead and get into the uh, edicts themselves. So if you want the full uh, written description of these edicts and all of the detail, uh, you can go ahead and look in the PVME Discord. Um, I'll have a link below for that Discord if you want. But I'm just going to roughly go over what each of them do. <clears throat> and how the edicts work in general is the order in which you uh, charge them. The uh, previous ones you charge get a stack when you charge a new one. So, for instance, if I charge Twin Shot first, I will have one st uh, stack of the Twin Shot edict. And when I charge the second one, Smite, I will then have two stacks of Twin Shot. And... Uh, most of the effects or all of the effects of these uh, edicts work based on per stack, kind of like invention perks, like uh, precise is X amount of uh, minimum damage increase per stack. Then, you know, these edicts are going to be no different than that. They work uh, pretty much the same. So twin shot, what happens is when you charge it, uh, when you charge each edict, you will, uh, they will turn green. You will be sent right to 100% adrenaline. So what I like to do is dump uh, either a Debo or something like that beforehand and then let it charge me all the way and then I can dump, you know, another uh, special attack or something like that. That's typically what I try and do for this boss. But uh, anyway, starting with what these actually do, Twin Shot is uh, the negative or the hex uh, is every auto attack Zami does to you there will be a second hit one tick after that is 10 percent the original damage you got hit uh but the benefit is you get more adrenaline on all your basic abilities i believe it's two percent per stack so with bow camping specifically on range this is really important to do first because a range can be pretty adrenaline starved if you don't have hex or not hex uh hydrix bolts so getting this one started up and getting the basic abilities really churning out some extra adrenaline, extremely helpful. Also getting 100% from each edict is very helpful as well for bow camp. So you can really dish out a bunch of threshes and special attacks and whatnot. But this is very important in my opinion for doing 99%. All right, so the second hex is called Smite. And what happens is if you end up uh, with this one per stack, uh, if you get hit below 5%, I believe it's 5% life point per stack is how it works, uh, you will just be instantly executed. So instead of, you know, dying when you get uh, your HP to zero, if it goes below a certain threshold, uh, you'll see it above, your HP bar will actually change when this effect happens. And you'll see like a box around it, and you'll see a little bracket on the left side. And that is your actual HP uh, bar. It doesn't change your HP bar on your ability bar like your main ability bar i wish it did but so far it doesn't and just the one above your head is the one you have to pay attention to basically just keep yourself at like at minimum a quarter hp to a half hp and you'll be more than fine uh not getting this however the nice thing is, is that all of your ability cooldowns will be reduced with this that's the benefit from this uh edict so uh, 8% per stack, and your ability cooldowns will start going down. It's 8% per stack, so, you know, um, I don't believe this affects uh, weapon spec cooldowns. I'm not entire. I don't believe it does, but it affects all ability cooldowns. So, like, all of your uh, dead shots, your rapid fires, your snapshots, you'll be able to fire out these abilities, like, no tomorrow with this edict. The third edict is called Coven or Coven, whatever. Basically, Zami just summons uh, two uh, little minions. He summons one that's called the Protector, and when you're attacking Zami and this one is alive, I believe you do 25% reduced damage. Uh, at 99%, it's not really worthwhile to go kill him before you kill uh, Zamorak or phase him, so to speak, because the HP values are so small that you can kind of just brute force through it and you'll be fine and you can kill the protector after you phase. And afterwards, what you can do is then when you're going over to disintegrate after you just kill the protector and then the other one is a healer that heals them. Like, I believe it's 1k for every auto attack that the uh, healer does. But 
by this time, you should be able to just toss like a Debo, Gricko, and maybe a uh, Dazing Shot, and he'll pretty much die instantly. Also, the benefit of this one when you charge it up is you will take and deal 5% additional damage per stack of this specific uh, Edict. So think of it like uh, Full Scripture or Telos Red Beam or the Berserk ability. It's all the same concept where, yes, you're dealing more damage, but you're also taking more damage. So it's a kind of a risk versus reward thing. Although it is pretty nice. And at the end of the kill, your Debos can be hitting pretty hard, almost 20Ks inside of a DS if it's during the uh, the red HP bar or the gray HP bar. Um, you can hit some really nasty hits with that. All right, so edict number four is called disintegrate and basically what happens is uh seven percent per stack of this edict well uh, seven percent of zami's damage will push through your defensive so it'll push through your disrupt shields your re uh, reflex uh any of those shield abilities it will push through that regardless even on barricade it will still hit you like the barricade will work but you'll still see that hit uh uh, right below and whatnot so just something to keep in mind at again at 99% this really doesn't have too much of an effect on the kill and the benefit is every time you cast an ultimate which is either like your death swift or your dead shot or for some reason if you hit incendiary shot you will be healed a percentage of life points based uh I think it's calced based on the damage that ability does and I believe it also calculates of uh, a certain amount of life from your missing uh, HP. So if you're low HP and you cast an ultimate, you can actually see a pretty decent heal. It's pretty nice. And But if you're kind of high HP, it's not going to heal a whole lot. It is kind of nice. It's helpful. But again, it's more of a high-end rage thing than a low-end rage. But, you know, take any benefit that you can get. The Chaos Traps Edict, uh, what happens is Zamu will spawn a bunch of uh, Chaos Traps all over the arena. When you run into these, they hit you for anywhere, I believe, two to 4,000 uh, magic damage. And things like Protection Prayer and uh, Devotion, Reflect, all of these things will work because it is just a standard auto hit. It is not like a soft typeless or a hard typeless or anything. Basically, what happens is when you summon this edict, one will spawn on each of the other edicts, but luckily you only have one left in this rotation, so you have to anticipate, you know, just before this one fully charges up, and then you'll avoid the stun, and you will take the magic hit, but honestly, it's not too big of a deal. And the, the benefit from this one is kind of pointless in my opinion, but if you stand near the uh, giant sword in the center, you take 5% less damage when you're standing out there. The last edict called Affliction, uh, the hex or the negative of this edict is your uh, any healing you do from food or whatever is reduced, but I believe it's 10% per stack, something like that. But since it's the end of the kill, it doesn't matter a whole lot. You'll have food for this. And you have to remember that the Chaos Trap one is still active, and he's going to toss out more Chaos Traps. So this you'll also have to anticipate or freedom for the Edict when it charges up. However, when you're below 60% life points, or 60% of your max life points, I believe, uh, you will be doing uh, increased damage, 6% uh, damage per stack. So you get a little bit extra damage. Think of this like the Berserker Fury Relic, where the lower your HP is, the more damage you do. It's like the uh, Darok set, set effect. It's all in that same kind of vein. And that's pretty much how I do 99% kills. I just run between each of them. Uh, again, if you want the full list of uh, written details on these edicts and whatnot that is in the PVME dis uh, Discord, there is a Zamorak section for uh, Zamorak himself. There's the dungeon run portion. Uh, they're starting a solo section, but I don't believe it is up and running yet. I think it's still under construction. And I believe they have a quick guide for the 99% uh, group. However, this is a solo guide, so that's what I was putting this together for. Personally, I'm not a big group fan. I really don't like PVMing in groups a whole lot. I'll go in duos, I'll go in trios, but anything more than that, and if it's not, you know, friends of mine, I pretty much like, I pretty much enjoy solo PVM, so that's what this guide specifically is for.
So with the Zamorak boss fight, there are five special attacks that you really have to worry about. Uh, there is technically a sixth one, but that's the one where when you finish him uh, for phasing purposes, uh, he spawns a mage in the Infernus that you have to go in and kill, but I personally don't. That's not a special attack that actually does uh, damage to you per se or anything, but it is a mechanic nonetheless. However... There are five specs that you uh, uh, need to worry about, and we'll start with the Flames of Zamorak. The Flames of Zami spec is, uh, he will say, this world war will burn and will hit you for two large melee hits. The first one is pretty heavy, uh, but the second one I think is about half of that, so... Uh, they're just two melee hits. Uh, when you start the kill, you can res the first one if you want. Uh, personally, I don't bother. I usually just use Devotion or something like that. And he spawns this uh, black smoke in between you and him. So what a lot of people will do is they run under and to like make sure not as much spawns. Or I think if you go directly under him, uh, none spawns. But personally, I'm on 99% specifically, I'm pretty lazy and I just deal with the... Uh, uh, one bit of smoke that I get hit with and then I don't collect any of the other bits because as far as I know for 99% It's not necessary that only affects the damage output you do on p7. So 100% and above collect the smoke 99% uh, and below I wouldn't bother the cage special attack is this uh, You'll see this cage animation kind of like uh, tormented demons do I believe when they are under protection prayer or they're switching protection prayer or something but it looks like the animation that uh tds used to do and still do and you just stand still uh you'll see a blue or a cyan bar below your hp or below your adrenaline i believe and once that one runs out that's when the magic hits will start to come in and that's when you can go ahead and put your prayer back on that initial hit from the spec will take off any overhead prayer you have on, but as soon as that bar runs out, just put on Protect Magic and it won't be too big of a deal to deal with. Also, during that spec, make sure you're not walking anywhere. I would just stand in the middle of it until it's done with and then you're free to move afterwards. The Chaos Blast attack, all it is is you have to stun him. It's one stun per person in the room, so for solo, it's only one stun, and then you will have to do a certain amount of damage based on the enrage you are doing. Uh, usually it's a minimal amount of damage and usually a threshold or two will take care of it and at the top of Zami you will see a bar kind of charging down one of those like yellowish gold bars and it has a blue background on it and depending on when you stop him and or finish the DPS check per se that bar will go away and how much that bar is depleted will determine how much damage comes out and hit you. You'll see a red cloud of smoke kind of flying towards you and then uh that hit comes out after he says the text line feel the rage of a god and you can use anything really to help mitigate this however um when dealing with this it will go through most things like it'll still hit you through reflect or debil i believe disrupt shield does half reduction so on 99% I just uh, use debilitate and disrupt shield call it good enough and move on it usually if you deal with it fast enough and know kind of when it's going to come out for your kills it should be pretty simple to deal with the infernal tomb special attack uh, what happens is he will uh, say uh, the uh, text line step into the dark meet your death and there's some you know pauses in between it's kind of a uh, quieter voice thing i would recommend playing or doing this boss with voice acting on uh it helps to differentiate what special attacks coming because they can happen quite quickly and it's just another way for you to recognize which one is coming next but what happens is he'll say that text line and what you want to do is he will stun you when the rune uh, comes out from him and tags you. So what I do usually is I hear the text line. I immediately just uh, hit anticipate. And then right as you teleport away, you'll see your character get forced teleport to Infernus. And you'll see like a little teleport up animation, like the one from clicking the extra action button. 
And then as soon as that animation starts, you can go ahead and hit any stuns. So for range here, it would be binding shot or tight bindings. Either one will work. And since you're in the Infernus, it will just auto uh, make you deal with any hit that's coming in. It forces it onto you. And once you're in the Infernus, if you time it correctly, um, you, it, it will hit you maybe for six, 700 damage at 99%. It's not much at all. And then you go inside to, or you're in the Infernus, you can kill the demon that's in there. And then you have to match the rune above you with one of the ones in the Infernus. And then as soon as you step under it, then you just get teleported out. The fifth and final special attack is called Rune of Destruction, and basically all that happens is he puts a giant red rune on the ground, and you'll see a clear circle kind of halfway out from him. It'll be the red circle in the middle. You'll see a clear spot where some smoke is kind of rolling around, and then there's a, uh, more rune on the outside. Basically, all you want to do is just not stand on anything red, and then avoid the smoke if it comes towards you. It is kind of random where the smoke uh, starts and then how long it goes before it switches directions, but just avoid it. You can use bladed dive surge. You can run away from it. Uh, I wouldn't avoid, I would avoid running around too much. And then if it hits you at 99%, you can kind of run in onto the red uh, part of the rune and take that damage until it goes away. And usually that's what I'll do, because if you're in the smoke for too long, I believe it's either three or four ticks, somewhere around there, if you're in it or if you're in the center of it. I'm not sure exactly what causes the stun, but you do get stunned if you're in that uh, rotating black smoke for too long. So uh, I would just keep freedom handy and ready to go in case you need it, but honestly, you probably won't. And yeah, that's all the special attacks. So now let's go ahead and move into the example kills. Alrighty, so I have the budget preset loaded up here. We're gonna uh, go ahead and do an example kill. Get some adrenaline real quick. And go ahead and run in. And as of right now, there is no real way to, there's no right click to redo the Lost and Rage. So I just press two, three, nine, 99 enter. And then I can surge, go directly to the chest, right click teleport. Hit Zami, and now it's uh, updated, so you go right into the encounter. Now, for this part, went wrong prayer. I just kill them in the backwards order of the order that I'm going to do. The mages, uh, anyway. So I'll kill the mages from 6 to 1, just kind of going around the room, you know, hitting a threshold. Maybe a Greco or something like that. And easy, as you can see, they're just they're pretty simple to kill. I would say keep magic prayer on for them, because they can hit, like... 2k damage i can't hit pretty hard so and then once you kill the last one here i usually like to stand right here on the beginning i don't like to instant charge the pad just kind of a personal preference type thing but once you kill the last one that's when you can start the fight and tc didn't want to work there but i usually gricko and then i usually get a snap rapid off right here toss my vuln down just to get the uh this hp bar down a little bit more because when you charge it up that's when the bar goes red and uh that's you have to just you, you have to deplete that this bar before you deplete uh, his main hp so here i can do a debo a Gricko, and then i get 100 another debo i got lucky here no it was on tick so just pray melee here for this attack and then you'll see a bar appear from the smoke since you're doing 99%, you don't have to worry about, you know, collecting all the smoke as far as P7 damage is concerned. And then here, I just usually disrupt into Bill. And then I'll try and pray flick. Some HP back. And I always like to run over to the next circle, or the next edict, before I teleport in. Just so when I come back, I can start instant charging. And I do sometimes like to deplete this bar. That appears at my, uh... My pocket slot is not. I usually like to deplete that bar before I go in to kill this mage. In here, I like to just Debo and Greco, and usually that does it with a couple extra basics. But it's a nice way to just build up some uh, more adrenaline. And you do have to click this to teleport back out. And here, we'll go ahead and get ready. Here, I like to do a uh, dead shot. I timed that so I can get my double Debo off. And there we managed to skip the special attack. 
so sometimes I get it sometimes I don't with this preset but double Debo usually gives the best shot although with Noxbow specifically you do have to do an ability in between or wait the tick in between so just keep that in mind whereas weapons like uh, ascensions or a hex hunter bow uh, those have a fastest option, so you can just back-to-back -back spec all day long, whereas most bows that have an average speed, uh, you have to wait a tick in between. Then for this one, I do like to do a DS, and A-Pod is off cooldown, so... Because the little protector is alive so i try to run through this hp a bit faster we got this spec so i just anticipate wait for the teleport animation to start hit a stun and then it deals with that attack this a hit's not going to hit you for much at all as you can see it was barely even 700 hp and since i'm in here i might as well we'll just kill everything toss a little rapid fire on the mage after destroying the uh demon if you have Demon Slayer on your gear, it is also beneficial for the demons, but it's not real. It is not at all necessary for 99%. That's something more for uh, high in reach. But oh, I pushed the, I touched the wrong one. You know, it is important to see what is above your head and pay attention. And if you're not paying attention like me, that's gonna happen. <laughs> so here, I'm gonna go ahead and now kill the protector. But mistakes happen. But you just. Shrug it off and keep moving past. And then for this one, I usually like to pop a Devotion. And then a Debo into a Gricko. Try and get this guy as possible, just so I can get a de Devotion extension. Run over to the number 4 Edict. And I'll get some damage off on him. Just so I don't have to deal with a whole lot. Oh, a charge door. Oh, yeah, because I killed the mage. Duh. Well, this will be an interesting one. I forgot that I killed the mage inside while doing the rune. But, you know, mistakes do happen. Not everything goes to plan. Let me just keep pressing forward. For this, you just wait for the bar to deplete, put magic prayer back on. If you have devotion up, you can devotion, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to you, so you can just kind of work through it for this attack since we got two you just stun here and then do some damage do another disrupt shield with a debil and should be fine and you can soul split during this part because after that attack he won't uh attack you for a little bit he won't put send at any auto so it's a nice soul split opportunity and there he started doing auto attacks but you can see we pretty much got the full health from soul splitting pad and then teleport in surge we already have anticipate up as we were teleporting got a relent there so i'll go ahead and hit a snapshot and a couple other basics since he does have some hp on him i'm gonna go ahead and use a dead shot here i'm gonna do a anticipation because this uh edict will stun you a Gricko into another Debo. Hopefully that does it. All right, there we go. We skipped it. And while he's doing magic, I'm going to go over here and clear out this one. Because those little things will hit you with magic damage. Get this HP down a little bit. But honestly, it doesn't matter too much since this is the last one we could just come out with a Death Swiftness. help if I was uh, anticipated beforehand but you know stuff happens As we teleport out we can go ahead and start a death swiftness up now I do have greater DS but it honestly makes zero difference in terms of damage you can freedom off tick there or off GCD if you uh, forget to anticipate and for this one, you just sit here and you get outside the red and you just avoid the black smoke. It's a really simple attack. If he does that, you just hit melee prayer, but honestly, it should be dead. And that's how you do a kill with this preset. As you can tell, I made a few mistakes there. Uh, nothing special. Oh, it looks like we got a unique. Which one did we get? 
Oh, a Chaos Roar. Not too bad, not too bad. But anyways, anyways as you can tell, um, I made a few mistakes there. And uh, I signed, but honestly, you can make a lot of mistakes 99% and it's not too big of a deal. You can kind of just YOLO your way through this and as long as you have food to mouth and... I didn't do a good job of charging up the Ripper a lot. Ripper Demon does help quite a bit, especially because Zami has very low defense. So, it is what it is. But uh, now we'll go ahead and move on to my personal preset. Alrighty, and now we're going to do a kill with my actual preset, the one that I usually do 99% uh, Zami with. And we're started here off with my bank preset. I just wanted to show real quickly what I'm using and kind of how this is set up. But what I'll do is I'll just... Turn on uh, Fortitude, it allows a little bit of extra HP from the campfire here and from Uglog, the Ogre Flask, the thermal one. So I go ahead and do those two. And I use uh, the Lanta and the Spirit Weed Incense. And since I'm using a Ripper Demon here for 99%, um, the Spirit Weed Incense is nice for Ripper spam. And the Lanta Dime allows the summoning renewal to uh, last a bit longer, so it's very helpful for that. So I just. Overload these, pop them a couple times. If I'm doing a full hour, then I would put these all the way up to the hour limit, but I'm just doing a, a quick example kill. So go ahead and do this potion, that potion, the Ogre Flask, summon the Ripper. I usually don't show this part, but I figured I would. If you guys would like a more in-depth video on uh, like my bank presets and how I kind of organize presets in general, things like that, I might include something like that in a video i need to do another update video for key bindings and how i do all of that stuff and sort of organizing everything but uh let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that anyways we're all loaded up here i'm gonna pop reckless aura go ahead and start and just like before hit two three nine 99 enter i wish they would add a right click option there just to redo last in rage but sadly it's not in there yet. I hope it's in the works. It'd be really nice. Just like with uh, Glacor or Talos, you can do that as well. And then for the mages here, uh, just like before, I kill them in the backwards order that I'm going to do the edicts in. Just so I end up over at the uh, edict number one when I'm done killing the minions to start the boss. Because... You have to kill all of these before the uh, the boss will start. You can't just aggro him and start the kill. You have to kill all the mages. And when you kill the last one, that is when the actual boss fight starts. So let's get right here. And then I usually wait a little bit. Because it takes him a little bit to get over. And then I like to get a couple bleeds off. A snap into a rapid. This will usually take care of the HP. And then I usually hit SGB. And I try and go for a second Debo, which I might get. I did. And as you can see, works very nicely for skipping the uh, special attack so I didn't have to even have to deal with it. And I'll go ahead and finish off my DS here. Just prayer flicking accordingly. And then I usually like to go over to the next edict before I teleport in. Anticipate and surge off GCD. Have a Debo ready. And as you can see, Hex Hunter does work on this mage. And it gets melted pretty fast, so... Very, very convenient. Now we're just waiting for the pad to charge up here. I'm going to go ahead and do an ECB. I don't want to do a DS. Do an SGB into a Debo. Into another Debo. Get a couple bleeds off, do a little bit more damage, and we're already heading in. Need a little bit of food. Oh, I forgot to rebind my, uh, my super bruise. Always check your keybinds before you go into a boss hour. It is probably the thing that I forget the most often is checking keybinds. For this edict, I like to get another DS going. Because of the uh, protector there, it's a little bit annoying to get the damage off. 
But this Debo should phase him. Yep. And I'll just sit here in the DS to get the HP down. Charge up the Ripper a little bit. Get another Debo spec in. Debo is your best friend at this boss, honestly. Then we'll go ahead and kill the Protector. I probably should have just killed the Protector right away, but uh, honestly, it doesn't matter too much what, what order you do. It might speed up the kill a little bit to kill this one and then just deal with the HP later in a DS or something like that, but that's the beauty of this boss. You can just do it however you want, really, because it's pretty sandboxy in that sense. The only thing to keep in mind, also, if you're using Hex Hunter over just a standard bow is uh, the distance of Hex Hunter is the same as, I believe it's Ascensions or any just standard crossbow. Got to freedom. That should be fine here. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're attacking. If you uh, end up stalling an ability, make sure you do release it instead of just uh, kind of sitting there doing nothing with it and wasting it. We'll go ahead and get the SGB out. I'm going to try a little bit risky. And it ended up working out. I wanted to save the uh, second Debo for this HP. Because when he's in this uh, HP bar, the gray one or the red one when the Edict is charged, uh, hit cap is pretty much r removed. You know, essentially, it goes up to 32k, but essentially it's no hit cap so the debo can hit you know 18 to 20k if you're in a ds or if you're out of ds it can still hit very high <clears throat> charge up another debo and by at this point basics are going to give so much adrenaline where you can really just dump uh any type of weapon spec you want uh here i'll just make it a little bit interesting go ahead and freedom And we'll just chuck a Debo because I can. And I'm just going to immediately run over this time and kind of build Adrenaline. I'm going to hit my Anticipate so I can block this thing. Took a bit of damage there because I forgot to pray flick in time, but you know, it all happens. Toss a Debo and just kind of build up a little bit on this one. And already back to full. A pot here and anticipate. Get a Debo off. I did use a bit of food this kill. Now let's devotion this. Just because I can. And there we go, that's the kill done. That's a, that's a pretty average, a little bit slow, but other than that, not too bad. And no drop, unlike the. Uh, the other kill but we'll go ahead and see what we got but as you can see once you get through you do start taking a bit more damage so you know if you're really worried about that um you can just drop the ecb specs they're not super required they're just kind of a fun thing to do but uh sgb into double debo is definitely the method that i would recommend especially with the uh charging of the edicts as you saw just kind of timing that out uh, if you're in the center of an edict, I can demonstrate this real quick. So if you're in the center, like uh, right here on this tile, you will actually charge faster than if you're on one of these more outskirt tiles. The uh, bar that is in the center will charge up uh, slower if you're out here. So what I do is I usually stand anywhere and just keep in mind the rate that it's charging. And then usually um, one to three ticks before the bar is done filling up you can already just have an sgb out because sgb takes a little bit to get out and actually hit but uh usually you can time it to where the sgb uh, arrows two through five uh if you get lucky with that arrows two through five will be smacking the hell out of him and arrow one will phase him if he's on low hp so you already have that going out the tick that he flashes over to red and then going into his main HP bar. And then you have the second Debo already going out for phasing. And by that time, you could probably hit another basic if it hasn't charged yet. But usually you'll get that adrenaline charge. And then you can toss another Debo and he's pretty much phased. And you really shouldn't be seeing too many special attacks. Maybe one or two if you get unlucky with uh, hit chance and whatnot. But that's pretty much how I do 99%. Ladies, 
gentlemen. And I did not forget about you, Nox Longbows. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about this guide, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you have suggestions for any other guides you would like to see in the future, leave it in the comments below. Anyways, I'm Car Guy. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next video. Peace.